found it. The legendary alcoholic beverage. Have you ever installed one of the more manual Linux distributions like Arch Linux or Gen2, or you've dug a little bit around your file system outside of where you'd normally be working and noticed a really weirdly named folder, a folder that you didn't make, it's just automatically there, a folder called Lost Plus Found. And have you ever been curious why this folder is here, what it does, and what's actually contained inside? Well, maybe not. But in my case, I recently had to use it. So if you try to give it a sus as a regular user, you're instantly going to notice a problem. Permission denied. Not just for doing a CD, if we try to do an LS for example, the exact same thing is going to happen. And not just the one that's located in my root directory here, if we go up to my home directory, there is going to be another one. If I try to do the exact same thing, it is going to say permission denied. As a regular user, you don't have write access, let alone even read access. Now on your system, you may not have a lost and found folder in your home directory, you may only have one in your root. But on my system, there is a very good reason why I have this. So let's go and run lsblk and notice where my mount points are. Home and root. So every single time I have one of these petitions, a lost and found folder is going to be made. But it's not just for every petition, it's for certain types of file systems. So any of you shills of XFS or ButterFS out there, you aren't going to have a lost and found folder. This folder is an artifact of ext2, 3, 4, and likely any versions that happen into the future, but I can't speak for anything that hasn't been released. Also, you're likely going to find it on a UFS and a ZFS system as well. But there may be other file systems out there that use it as well. Now, as my user doesn't have permission to see the contents, let's go and check it out with sudo and see what happens. In this case, what we get is... Nothing. And that's not too strange. Let's go and check out the one in root. Let's run the same command. And this time, we also get... Nothing. So the folder is useless then? Well, no, not exactly. It's very common that your lost and found folder on all of your petitions is going to be completely empty, especially on a new system or a new drive or a system you've kept in a pretty healthy state. But let's go and check out a drive I know has data in it. This drive and this petition is where my home directory used to live and it has a lost and found folder. Let's go and do the exact same thing as before and see what happens. This time, I know for a fact there is data here, but all of the data seems really weird. It's just hash and then a string of numbers. So what gives there? Clearly there's something here, but it seems like gibberish. The world of computing is an imperfect place and sometimes data isn't handled correctly. What do you think is going to happen if you're saving a document and then your power suddenly goes out? Maybe you have a kernel panic. Maybe you have a bit of a flaky hard drive leaving your system in a bit of an inconsistent state where data isn't being saved correctly. In many of these cases, the name and the location that it is supposed to be saved at is completely gone. In other cases, maybe the name is known, but the data isn't fully preserved. But in all of these cases, it leaves the data you're supposed to be saving in a state that's not exactly usable, and you don't have a way to properly access it. Now, the file system could just say, this data is nonsense, I am just going to delete it. And that would be a solution, but it's a solution that would annoy a lot of users, because in a lot of cases, this data is still totally recoverable, and you don't want your file system just arbitrarily deleting things. But it is really bad to just have this data floating around your system. A lot of user space applications really don't know how to handle this, and will suddenly crash, or file pickers will freeze, and things just don't work the way you'd expect them to be working. So to make sure that things don't suddenly break, I can't speak for every distribution out there, but especially Arch Linux running systemd and likely most other systemd distros out there as well, is going to do a file system check every time you boot your system. And if it notices too much of this data, it's not actually going to let you log in. And it will show you a message saying file system check failed on whichever petition happens to be the issue. In my case, it was my home petition. 
Basically, all you can do from this state is try to log in as the root user and perform a disk repair using a tool like FSCK. And as you go through this process, it's going to start saying this data is an issue, this data is an issue, this data is an issue, and then at the end, dump out this giant wall of numbers because FSCK isn't going to be deleting that weird data, it is going to be trying to repair it. And the data that can't be repaired, that is going to be moved here. So what's up with the numbers then? Well, we don't have the original file or folder names, otherwise we would go and use that. So we need some sort of name to make sure we can actually sort it in the file system. What's better to use then than just the inode number? Now without going too deep into what inodes are, basically it is the data structure that points to where the data is stored on your drive. However, if you say lose an entire folder and names in that folder can be preserved, then those names are going to be used. So your next thought is going to be, okay, data is here, that means I can recover it, yes? Kinda? No, maybe a little bit? Depends entirely on the state the data was moved here in. So keep in mind, data is moved here because it's in kind of a corrupted state. And that means in a lot of cases, you may be perfectly fine. Like I've seen images here, I've seen thumbnails, for example, all of those being perfectly fine. But someone asked me about my videos, for example, and there's nothing recoverable there. Maybe like a second or two, maybe like some corrupted noise, but nothing actually usable. But that doesn't mean that you're completely out of luck. There are some command line tools you can use to get you a bit of an idea of what's going on. So if we go into su, just because this will make it much easier to run the commands, and then cd into that lost and found folder, you can use things like ls-l to find out how big each of the files are. You can use this find command right here to go through all of the files here and then find out what type of data it's going to be. Now, a lot of it, as I said, is going to be kind of junk, but if we go and cancel out of that and run it again, this time we grep for PNG, I think it is, or is it lowercase PNG? As you're going to see, there are some things in here that may be of use. I don't know if they're of use, but there's some thumbnails here, and maybe those are good, but you can also see then... Okay, the size isn't what it should be, so maybe it's not very useful. There are absolutely tools that can help you display this data, but when it comes to sorting through this data and working out whether it's still usable, you're basically on your own, because no amount of tool is going to be able to automatically put those files back where they're supposed to be. Because if FSCK knew where they were supposed to be, the files would be where they're supposed to be. There is a very high probability the data you're looking for is completely unusable. The lost and found folder is not a way to do a rollback, is not a way to do a backup or recovery or anything like that. It is just a place that data that FSCK has no idea what to do with is going to be put in. If you are stupid and delete your lost and found folder, do not make it again by using make der lost and found and then trying to set the permissions to what it should be. Whatever. <laughs> Go and use the proper command to do so. It is make lost and found. The reason why we use this command is this is going to pre-allocate space for data to be put into this folder. Using it through make der may cause some issues down the line if the folder actually needs to be used. Hopefully you have good backups and you never have to dig through a lost and found folder. But if you've ever been curious what's inside the folder, I hope this satiates your desire and now you know. So if you like this video, go and let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below, all that fun stuff, and go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, Stanley Berapate, link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.